Water-fueled cars are possible, but not the way you think it would be. With the rise in fuel prices, it makes a lot of sense for us to think about alternative sources of energy to power our vehicles. The best option we have right now would be hybrid electric vehicles like what we have from Toyota or battery electric vehicles like the ones from Tesla. But have you ever thought of running your vehicle by just using water? It makes a lot of sense, at least in theory, to use water because water happens to be the most abundant naturally occurring substance on our planet. So why not somehow build an engine that could use water as a source of fuel, considering how abundant it is? If that happens, transportation would be a lot cheaper, right? But wait, there's a problem. Water is not a fuel. Therefore, it could never replace gasoline-powered vehicles or even electric vehicles. Let us explain why. The 21st century witnessed massive innovations and impressive technological advancements, but we still don't have a new source of energy that could power our vehicles, apart from electric vehicles and gasoline vehicles. There were several attempts to create water-powered cars that could directly derive their energy from water. These cars, in theory, are designed to use water as a fuel with no other source of energy input, or they can even run as hybrids, deriving energy from water or gasoline when needed. Water is made up of hydrogen, which can be a potential alternative to fossil fuels of today because it's very flammable. But once water is formed, it's in its most stable state, which means water as it is cannot be used as a fuel. So if at all you could use water as a fuel source, how exactly would that work? Well, right now, the most practical application of water-powered vehicles would be with the help of a process which involves deriving hydrogen from water, known as electrolysis. This is a process where water is broken down into oxygen and hydrogen. But there are rigorous processes that are involved in taking apart water molecules released at the point where hydrogen is oxidized to form water. This also involves a whole lot of vitrification before it is required for safe use. The very first process when it comes to building a water-powered car is to have the necessary infrastructure to store hydrogen in a tank, and this tank needs to meet certain specifications required to make it effective. It should be immune to cracking, it should have a thick wall, and it should also be placed below the back seat. Some of these specifications can raise the prices of vehicles. This stored-up hydrogen would then be mixed with air and pumped into a fuel cell and once this is done, a chemical reaction proceeds to extract electrons from hydrogen. The remaining hydrogen protons are moved across the cell to mix up with oxygen taken from the air to produce water. It is a well-known fact that electrons are natural electricity producers, and these electrons create electricity which can then charge a small storage battery, which would then be used to power your vehicle. We already have hydrogen-powered electric vehicles but those are not the same as what you would expect with vehicles that are water-powered vehicles to fully run on water. Water in its original form cannot be used as a fuel, so water needs to be broken down into its constituent elements, and that's how fuel cells work. The problem with such a system where water is being used as a fuel lies with the fact that an electric current should be passed through the water to cause the splitting of hydrogen and oxygen water. This process requires more electrical energy for electrolysis than the energy that you would get back from burning the hydrogen and oxygen, which means water-powered cars would just be a dream for now. This is because water simply cannot burn like traditional fuels out there, and any hope of extracting energy from it is crushed by chemistry. That being said, let's take a look at the chemistry of water. A water molecule contains three atoms, one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms which bond together like strong magnets. Breaking those bonds between oxygen and hydrogen atoms will always take more energy than what you get in return, which then makes no sense to have water as fuel. Let's say if a company wants to build a water-powered car, they need to spend a lot of money on equipment to split water molecules apart and separate its oxygen and hydrogen. The car will also need to have separate tanks for both hydrogen and oxygen, along with the combustion system, which could mix them both and ignite them, or a fuel cell that could recombine them to produce electricity. The released energy could then drive a piston or run a motor and move the car. But the other problem would be the fact that water molecules are extremely stable, which means that the energy needed to separate the atoms is greater than what you get back. 
Hydrogen is also extremely flammable, which means that without the right safety measures, you would be driving a portable bomb, which could explode any time. It makes a lot of sense why people want vehicles that run on water. Because petrol, diesel, and CNG are all fossil fuels, and they're very limited. It takes millions of years for them to form, and we might soon run out of this source of energy, which as of now, works really well. It makes a lot of sense why people would want their vehicles to run on a resource as abundant as water, which already covers more than 70% of the Earth's surface. But the problem with all the issues that surround water-powered cars is they are now an impossible dream because of laws of thermodynamics and simple chemistry. Hydrogen in itself is available in abundance in the environment and burning hydrogen causes no harm to the Earth because it will return the gas to the form of water. When you burn hydrogen, it also releases tremendous amounts of energy per mole. But again, chemistry simply does not work in our favor. Water cannot simply burn like fossil fuels, which means a lot of infrastructure must be built into a vehicle to actually make it sustainable. That being said, there were several attempts to build a water power engine. But the problem with all of this is they have extraordinary claims, and for their extraordinary claims, they did not have extraordinary evidence. Probably the first attempt to develop a water fuel car was by an inventor named Charles Garrett. According to the Dallas Morning News report, Garrett demonstrated a water-powered car way back on September 8, 1935. But when the patent that Charles filed for his design was examined, it revealed that he used electrolysis to power the car and his patent failed to bring any new source of energy. The next attempt was during the late 70s, where one of the most famous claims for a water fuel car was made by Stanley Mayer during the peak of the oil crisis. He claimed that he built a dune buggy that used water as fuel. But when he was questioned about his invention, his answers were mostly inconsistent. On some occasions, he even claimed to have swapped the spark plugs with a water jet for using water as fuel. And in some other instances, he claimed to have used water cells to split the hydrogen and oxygen molecules, which is again electrolysis, which by now you know is very inefficient. However, his claims were never verified by any reputed automobile association. Mayer was also sued by investors to whom he sold dealerships for so-called water fuel cell technology. Another hoax of water-powered cars in recent times was pulled off by a Japanese company by the name GenePax. The company supposedly unveiled a car that ran completely using water and air. The company also made claims that they were using an energy generator called a membrane electrode assembly to extract energy from hydrogen by splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen. But Popular Mechanics, which happens to be a renowned science magazine, disproved some of those claims by gene packs and called them rubbish. All of this means that water-powered cars are not going to happen anytime soon, due to the fact that electrolysis is the only way to extract any usable energy-producing molecule from water, which right now is hydrogen. And to extract that hydrogen, it requires more energy than the energy that hydrogen is capable of producing when used as a fuel. And that's why water-powered cars will exist only in our imagination, and you won't be driving one anytime soon. The bottom line is, water-powered cars, in theory, would give us a clean energy source, which means we could drive our car without worrying about polluting the environment. Not that most people care about it anyways, but that is something that you need to think of right now. It also offers a way to power vehicles by simply using only water and emitting only water vapor. We still don't have any legitimate designs to perform electrolysis using less energy, because that is something that would make water-powered cars viable. If it uses more energy than what it produces, then there's no point in having water-powered vehicles anyways. The future of water-powered cars as of now remains uncertain, but if something big happens in this space, that would change the game and that would change the way we transport ourselves from one place to another. If that happens, we will finally get a truly clean and viable fuel that causes no harm to the environment.